You need to be operating as a team. And one of the things that's going to hurt your marriage, and turn, if you would, please, to Ephesians chapter 5. I told you we're going to get there. That goes along with, with treating your marriage as, as, as a team, as being one flesh, as being one person. Obviously, we know in every marriage there are problems, there are fights, there's disagreements. That's normal. Okay? How you deal with those issues, though, is extremely important. And when you can keep in mind, you know what? Yeah, I'm getting irritated. Yeah, I'm getting aggravated. Yeah, they're doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And I'm doing, you know. One thing you don't want to do, and one thing that'll come back to bite you, don't go around telling other people about the problems that you're having with your spouse in your marriage. Because what you're doing. And just think about this, if you're, one, if you're one, if you're one flesh, you're just talking bad about yourself. It's going to come right back around again. You say, no, but I'm talking about him. Yeah, but you're one. You're supposed to be on the same team. You're not, you, you don't need to be going out trying to recruit people to your side because you shouldn't have a side. It should be one side. One person. This is the mindset. This is the way you need to be thinking to have a successful marriage. You say, yeah, but they're wrong. Oh, that, that may be true, but you don't need to go around getting anyone else involved to tell you you're right because oftentimes what happens is then, you know, people go to people who are either friends with them or maybe family. And I've seen this happen too many times because usually it's family that gets involved and it's the, you know, whether it's the husband or the wife, they go and talk to their mom and their dad or their brother, right? And of course, they're going to, you know, they love that person. So they're going to, you know, be talking to them. And oftentimes they give really bad advice. And they're going to be telling you, oh man, yeah, you, you know, maybe you made a mistake or maybe, you know, and just, just talking all kinds of things in your ear or just telling you to do things that are just not right. If they're not telling you, well, no, you married that person. You know, you need to, to work on it and get it right. They're giving you bad advice. No good comes out of, you know, talking bad about your spouse to anyone else. And don't play it off like, whoa, I just want to get some advice on what to do. Look, the Bible tells you what you need to do. It's very clear. It's very simple. You don't have a choice of, of divorcing. And the Bible gives one, one instance, except it be for fornication, is the only instance that a divorce is acceptable in the sight of God. It's not endorsed, it's acceptable, it's allowable under the law of God. And guess what? Fornication happens before you consummate a marriage. It's not adultery, it's fornication. And once you consummate that marriage, you're sealing the deal. It's done. So if that's already happened, if you're going to do what's right, and if you want to know what's right, what's right is you're going to stay together. One of the keys to having a good marriage and making sure you're not going to be in a house divided is by making sure you are in your biblical role within the house. And again, this is important for the husbands as well as for the wives. However, the bigger problem in our society has more to do with the wives, although there is still major problems with husbands as well these days, not loving their wife as they ought to. But the women have been taught and have been brainwashed for decades now in our country in Western culture that, you know, I am woman, hear me roar, and I'm strong, and I can do everything a man can do, and I'm going to go off, and I'm going to put on my pants, and I'm going to go work out in the field, and I'm going to do all these things and be like a man. And that's wicked, okay? That is an, uh, Satan's attack on God's creation of male and female because he made men and women different. He didn't make them to be the same at all. If he did, he would have just made man and man. But that's not what he made. He made man and woman. 
And the woman came from the man, but they're different and they're designed different and they're built different. And anybody with two brain cells put together can see that a man and a woman are not the same. And they're not built for the same things and they have different functions and one is not better than the other. They both hold equal value in the eyes of God. They're both children of God. God loves a woman just as much as a man. But when it comes to what you're supposed to be doing, God, the boss, the ultimate boss, has decided what do I want a woman to do and what do I want a man to do? And he's already made up his mind on that. And we have it found right here. And we're going to read what that is from Ephesians chapter 5. So you could have the world telling you something completely different, but I don't care what the world has to say. I care what God has to say. And if you follow what God has to say, the world's going to make fun of you. Okay? You can expect that. But I don't care if the world makes fun of me. I care about what God thinks. I care about what God said. I want to do things right. And if I could follow what the Bible says, if I could do things the right way, hey, that's going to ensure that I have a good marriage. Because God's the one that made us. God's the one that instituted marriage. God's the one that, that designed all of it. So why wouldn't I listen to God on how we should play it out, on what the roles are?